Before we can start usage-based optimization, we need to configure the server. So in Management Studio, we connect to Analysis Services, and then right-click on the Analysis Server and select Properties. Here there's a whole section devoted to the query log. You can see all of the properties here. The Create Query Log Table needs to be set to True here, and then we need to define the Query Log Connection String only SQL Server is supported here. I'm going to select the local server and then I'm just going to put this into AdventureWorks DW 2008 R2 for now. Now the default sampling rate is 10. In the beginning you may want to change this value to 1 so that you're capturing every query because if the slow query is not part of your sampling you're not going to be able to capture the information necessary for usage-based optimization to work. You can also specify an alternate query log table name if you like. So once this is done, our next step is to run queries and add values to those logs. I'm going to do that from within bids, although I could do that in Management Studio, or I could do it with Excel, or I could write MDX queries, but I'm just going to do a few quick queries here. We'll analyze by calendar year. And each time I click on something, every time I drill, that is executing a new query. Every time I drill up, I drill down. you notice there's a little bit of slowness here. That will undoubtedly be helped by having aggregations. So once I've generated a few queries, I can go back and check the OLAP query log. Here we can see it's been loaded up with 313 rows of data. That means I executed 313 queries while you watched. Some of those queries had a longer duration than others. We can see which database, which partition was used, who the user was, and we can also see the data set. So here's those zeros and ones that we saw in the query subcube events. So again, this information is not particularly useful to us as is, but fortunately we have a usage-based optimization wizard to help us out here. Now that usage-based optimization wizard can be run on a partition here in Management Studio, or you can go back to your design in bids and make your changes there. And the advantage of doing that is if you're using a source control system, all of your design work will be preserved in the context of a project. So let's go to the aggregation page, return to the standard view, and the second button on this toolbar is usage-based optimization. And this is a wizard that we walk through that prompts us for filter criteria. Now you can leave the filter criteria blank and have it analyze every item, or you can filter by date, you can filter by user, or the most frequent queries. Now, you could game the system a bit by deleting any records out of the OLAP query log that run very fast, so that those aren't considered at all. I won't do that in this case, because I don't have a lot of queries to work with. Also, you might be tempted to use this Most Frequent Queries option 
But remember that analysis services will cache the results of queries so that if a query is being run repeatedly, then the results of that query will always remain in cache. And cache is going to be used before aggregations, so it's not necessary to design aggregations specifically for the frequent queries. On the next page of the wizard, we see the various combinations of dimensions and attributes, as well as the frequency of those particular combinations, as well as the duration of the queries. We can sort by any of these columns. We can see the longest query here was still pretty fast for analysis services. But nonetheless, this gives us something to work with for aggregation designs. So we'll continue. And then just as we do in the aggregation wizard, the usage-based optimization wizard asks us for counts. So we can just use the count button, or we can manually update the counts of our members within this partition. Then next we get to the aggregation options. And notice that the default is now performance gain reaches 100%. When we use the aggregation wizard, the default there is 30%. That's because a few aggregations can go a long way towards boosting performance, whereas with usage-based optimization, we want to optimize completely for those particular combinations. So we'll click the Start button. And currently, we only have four aggregations in there, three that, that were there previously, plus the one that I added in an earlier demonstration. And so this wants to add some additional aggregations. We can create a completely new aggregation design, or more commonly, we would merge this with the existing aggregation design, so that the usage-based optimization wizard allows us to continually fine-tune and add in aggregations so we can preserve what we had, plus have the advantage of the new aggregations that should help our queries. And we can process these partitions immediately or not, but basically we can save this design and then process the indexes. Now one thing to bear in mind is that we can do our processing of a partition without reprocessing the cube, and we'll talk about processing in a separate module. But just know that we can add aggregations without having to reprocess the entire cube. Let's just go ahead and finish this so that we can review these aggregations. We'll go into the advanced view, and now we can see the entire set that it came up with. So we can see that category and subcategory were used frequently, as was year. and territory aggregations were added in many aggregation designs as well.